Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. Just so grateful to have you with me today. And as we usually begin our studies, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, here we are once again, ready to receive from you, knowing that you desire that we know about you, your son Jesus, and your ways in this world. So we ask today by your Holy Spirit that you would guide us into all the truth concerning those things, and Lord, then empower us by your Spirit to live in a way that is pleasing to you. We'll be so grateful to you for doing so. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson, lesson is Abolished Enmity, and it's taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 15. As we consider the words of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesian church members, we notice the blessings God Almighty has extended through Jesus Christ to his church. Paul told the Ephesians, Jesus is our peace who has made both the Gentiles and the Jews as one, and he has broken down the middle wall of partition between them. In chapter 2 and verse 15 of his letter to the Ephesians, Paul shared how Jesus abolished in his flesh the enmity that was between them as well. We read, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of the two one new man, and so making peace. The verse begins, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Paul began with the words having abolished, which means to render idle, unemployed, inactive, and inoperative in his flesh or in the soft substance of his living body, which covered his bones and which are permeated with blood, the enmity, which means hostility, reason for opposition and hatred, even the law or the thing established, custom, the precept, injunction, and act of rule of commandments, which means orders, commands, charges, precepts, and injunctions contained in or with, by, and among ordinances, which refers to doctrines, decrees, rules, and requirements of the law of Moses. The law of commandments separated the Jews from the Gentiles because the Jews had the law of Moses and the Gentiles did not. This caused a separation between the two groups, and yet Jesus abolished this separation. The verse goes on to say, For to make in himself of the two one new man, so making peace. Paul continued, For to make or create form and shape in himself, which refers to Jesus, of the two or both or two one new man which refers to a recently made, fresh, unused, unworn, new kind, unprecedented, novel, uncommon, and unheard of man. So making peace, which means producing and providing tranquility, exemption from the rage of havoc and war. It, it implies security, safety, prosperity, and felicity. By dying on the cross, Jesus made one way by which both Jews and Gentiles might be saved. This brought Jews and Gentiles to a state of tranquility and peace. When we think through these words of Paul, we marvel at the wisdom and grace of God Almighty and his son Jesus. They knew there was a faction and separation between those who were given the law of commandments, the Jews, and those who were not, the Gentiles. When Jesus died on the cross for everyone's sin, he fulfilled the law of commandments and thereby rendered inactive the means by which their separation was formed. Where there was once enmity, there is now peace. Next time, Paul shares how God reconciled both Jews and Gentiles in one body by the cross. So read ahead and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.